The idea of having a church service with some gun shooting was obviously right up the cop's alley. So I just finished my eighth cross-country drive as part of the 2018 Cannonball Memorial Run. And you might have recognized that from the stories that we told about last year's event. And you may have seen some of the live streams. I hope you did. And I hope you found a way to donate to this great cause. But actually in 2016, this charity was set up by two sergeants for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. And it's designed to provide assistance and provide financial relief to the families of fallen officers. Because even though there are state and federal programs in place to provide some financial relief, those those take months or even years to collect on. There's a lot of bureaucracy and infrastructure in the way. So this was designed as sort of a grassroots movement for police and civilians to come together and raise money and awareness for these families and to show our gratitude for the guys that protect us and potentially even make that ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. Because each year an average of 161 police officers die in the line of duty. Obviously some of them get a lot of press, they're in the news and things like that, but unfortunately far too many of them fall through the cracks. And while some of them are ghastly violent murders that we do hear about, a lot of them are just single vehicle car crashes. And that's one of the things they wanted me to come along and talk a little bit about is because obviously we drove at speed across the country for a very long time with a lot of data and distractions coming into the car. And we were able to do that safely by being prepared, understanding what we were doing, and obviously we had a great outcome. But that doesn't always work for these guys that are on their patrols and driving around in their cars and they have so much going on that they do get distracted and sometimes they crash and die. And even in the 77 hours we were on the road during this trip, two officers in separate accidents had that exact thing happen. And so that's one of the things we speak to as we stop and try to support these guys is to say, look, driver preparedness, avoidance of distraction, and vehicle preparedness are critical as you set out on a drive because you never know when the speeds are going to step up and when something like this could happen. And sometimes there is great infrastructure, great support networks, and a precinct behind them that can really step up in those circumstances, but that's not always the case. I mean, for guys like us, we kind of view a cop as a cop as a cop and that they're all the same, but in fact, there's a huge variation in the training, in the resources, in the size, and the support of everybody that's behind them. And so the chance for you know, officers and civilians to come together in an effort like this as a you know, drive across the country to raise such awareness and to raise money is a huge opportunity. And it's been an honor for me to be a part of it for the last couple of years. And this drive was like no other. I mean, it kind of takes its own form. You appreciate the country and the people you're with in an entirely new way just because you never know what's going to happen in that many miles on the road. And amazingly, this year, we didn't get pulled over once. I mean, last year, I think we probably had about a dozen pullovers and unscheduled meetings with police officers. But we don't stop for sleeping or anything else, we just stop for gas and then we stop at precincts that have lost officers in the past year. So this year we stopped at nine and obviously there were many more and each time that happens this organization within 24 hours writes and sends a check to the families of these officers. And so it's a great cause and each year they're able to raise more money and donate more and each of those checks gets a little bit bigger and eventually they want that to be $10,000 within 24 hours. But we did have two stops here in the home state of Georgia and the first was at Polk County. And we were a little early ahead of schedule getting into there and uh, instead of kind of going early to their precinct, they invited us to their local church, which was something I was very excited to do. And it was a unique church experience for some of these West Coast guys because they had a meeting on the first Saturday of every month where they have a little devotional, they cook breakfast, and then they go out in the parking lot and shoot skeet. And so the idea of having a church service with some gun shooting was obviously right up the cop's alley, and we had a lot of fun there, and they were gracious hosts as well. So then we continued on to Locust Grove, and we saw the community and the department that had come together there to support the Maddox family, and we continued up to South Carolina. And once again on this trip, one of the objectives was to collect all the patches from the uniforms of these fallen officers and take them to the office of the Attorney General in Washington, D.C., because again, that's the final destination. And even though last year we started at the Santa Monica Pier, this year I got them to go to the Portofino. So we started in Redondo Beach and we had all the support of their officers. They even hosted us at their secret police hangout the night before, which was 
a fairly uh, new experience for me, but fortunately, most of them are Cannonball fans. Obviously, they chose that to kind of be the vessel for their fundraising in this effort. So it's been great to see kind of that intersection of automotive enthusiast and police officer towards some really, really justified and exciting goals. And so I had a great time, but you know, the cars did well. We rent Suburbans just because we need room and space for everybody. And there were nine of us in two Suburbans. One of them had to be exchanged at the Avis at McCarran Airport as our stop through Vegas happened because it had a bad vibration in the front right. And certainly we depleted their oil levels and harassed some OnStar agents and might've done some donuts in a few parking lots along the way. But it's so cool to just you know bond with these guys and hear what their lives are like because on the other side of the radar gun, you know, our perception can be a little bit different. But you learn these guys are car guys. They love what they do and they appreciate us appreciating them because it's a very interesting dynamic between, you know, law-abiding or not always law-abiding citizens and the officers that are sworn to protect us. And they do a great job and we need to stand behind them, we need to support them, and we need to do anything we can. And uh, we did a few things this year. We sold shirts and we actually took the uh, 55 mile an hour speed limit sign out of the background here. We all signed it and auctioned it off on eBay. We'll do more things like that next year. So please stay tuned and I'll trim some of the live streams into it, something that's a little bit more digestible at some point. But we really appreciate all the support. You can continue to donate at cannonballmemorialrun.org and you can follow along on their social media pages for different ways to stay involved and support them. But I'm looking forward to next year. I'm always happy to be involved in charities like this and I hope that you'll all look at law enforcement in the the way that we need to, that they're there to protect us, they're there to help us, and whatever we can do to help them, we need to step up and do it.